Hey folks, Micah McGee here. As you know, recently we came in contact with some very good hickory wood. I'm thinking this hickory wood was always meant for this purpose right here. I wasn't planning on doing anything for Labor Day, but Bob has been talking about it for three weeks solid and I can't get it out of my head. Mangalitsa pork is a very fatty pork. It's a lard breed, and it's got the very best taste in fat. And some people hate fat, so you don't even have to worry about this. But if you like fat and you like flavor, you're gonna love Mangalitsa pork, and it goes so good with a fire and with smoke. It just it takes that flavor to the next level. This right here is Mangalitsa. This is a shoulder. He's young, obviously he's not huge, but we're not feeding an army today, but I want you to look at the thickness of that fat. He's not very old, but he already had three quarters of an inch of fat on him. And that meat is beautiful red meat, hard to beat. Gonna be perfect for this exact cook right here. All right, the first thing we're gonna do here is not season. No salt, no nothing. Salt pulls moisture. The last thing I wanna do is stick this in here and have my moisture all fall out. That's not as important with a fat mangalitsa as it is, say a deer or wild pork or something like that, but I still use this method because it's, it works perfectly. We're gonna put it in here. We're gonna let it cook and smoke for about an hour or so. We're just gonna go by looks. When, we, when it looks like it's ready to come out, we're gonna take it out. Then we'll use our seasoning and wrap it. And I'm gonna put the fat up that fat can run all over that. I'm gonna set it right there. We're gonna shut it down. Contain that heat, contain that smoke. It's fixing to do its thing. While this is cooking, let's run over to the property and see if some of that blue corn, some of that blue, yellow, white cross corn, some of that yellow corn, and some of that white and yellow cross corn We'll see if all that's ready. If it is, we may just have a feast. All right, this is supposed to be blue corn. We're fixing to find out. If you remember, if you followed us this long, back in the spring, we planted sugar beets in this part of the field. I found some of them growing. They're not huge yet. I think they're still growing, but that's what they look like right there. I'll take these home with me and I'll cut them and taste them and see what they taste like. I don't know, I'll wash them first. But I'm gonna check right here and see this corn see what we've got here is it blue that's gonna be the question of the day number one is it blue and number two is it ready to eat because we might just want to chew into this this one is a crossbreed blue and white I'll pick some more see if we can't find some cross Cross. It looks like they may all be crossed. This thing ain't pure purple, but I want you to look at the size of that ear. Unbelievable. Stick your fingernail in it. If it squirts you in the face, it's ready. Oh, it's ready. Let's head on around, see what we can find in the other field. All right, the sun is in the wrong position for this shot, but this is the best I can do in this 
part of the field, you might recognize this. This is the field that has the soybeans in it. The soybeans are that tall now. Unbelievable. They've got blooms on them. They might make beans in time before the frost. It doesn't matter. It's all going back in the soil and we're gonna plant crimson clover in here as soon as we get this corn chopped. Technically, we could chop, chop the silage today, but I like to wait. I like to wait till the seeds are in the late dough stage, if not just a little harder. It seems like the, the kernels of corn last in the silage a lot better. This is the field that's supposed to be the cross. It's supposed to have the purple and the white and the yellow. And as I can see right here, I've definitely got purple, white, and yellow. So I'm guessing the blue seed that Eric sent me also had crossed on the plant back in Indiana, but we're loving it. I can't wait to cut it off this cob and get it smoking in that cream. All right, you obviously will recognize this. This is a location where we have been before talking about Farm All Fanatic and his desire that so organically sprouted in his heart to grow crimson clover. He talked me into growing soybeans. I'm gonna pan around and show you my beans. That beef. He told me they'd bring in the deer. Of course, the deer are already here, but they definitely did bring in the deer. The deer were here. One deer decided to stay in my freezer. Bless his heart, I appreciate that. The soybean growing idea, it wasn't my first year to do that, but the question is, if he hadn't have mentioned that to me, would I have done it this year? I don't know, but hopefully he'll grow some crimson clover and we'll have a swip swap. He's gonna get the better end of this deal, let me tell you. So many people say, can't believe that you could grow corn every year and not skip a year and never use fertilizer and always get this kind of result. These ears are up here. Look, there's two. I'll break them all off. In case there's any doubt. I'm going to show you. I had people on Facebook say, you're going to lose a crop. And if, if there's anything us YouTube people know, it's Facebook people are always right. Look here. This is the Guatemalan yellow corn. This Guatemalan corn has a ton of shucks. I mean a ton of shucks, but I want you to look. That right there go through that silage chopper. There ain't no lost crop here, but I'll also show you there's a lot of shuck on the Guatemalan, but it chops up into that silage and they eat it. Every bit of this is edible. 100% of this gets eaten. None of it gets thrown away. And even without putting any of that back in the ground, crimson clover is enough to do this again next year. Come on, farm all. So I'm gonna get to the house and cut these off with that other. But before we do that, we gotta check one more field. All right, we're over here at my cross-pollinated corn. As you can see to my left, here's my famous pokeberry bush that's become famous on YouTube and Facebook both. People don't have any idea how much potency one bush can create. It's unbelievable. Yes, you did see me just put that pokeberry in my mouth. I'm not going to chew the seeds up. I'm going to spit the seeds out. But I'm going to swallow the berry because it's good for you. It's common to believe that pokeberry will kill you. What's not so common, it'll heal you. You got arthritis, just take you a berry every once in a while you walk by. That's not the prescription. If you've really got it bad and you want to cure yourself, you got to take eight a day for three days. Then you won't be hurting. McGee, this is not about that. Hey, this is my Labor Day video. I can do whatever I want. Let's check this corn out and see what we got here. As you can see, this stuff's tall and big. Let's see what we got here. This is... This ear is on the the style of the pure Guatemalan, and that's basically what it is. We 
I don't see none of the mix in this one. So it's got the pure goodness. I might have thrown some pure yellow seed in this field when I planted it. Let me see what else I could find here for you. All right. Let's see what we got here. I'll throw this in with the cows. They can eat, eat them shucks. Look here. There's my white yellow combo. I crossed them in this field two years ago. Last year I grew them over where I've got my yellow corn planted now. And then this year I grew them back in this field again. And it's pretty. It ain't as pretty as Eric Hale's purple and white and yellow. But it's pretty. Let's go cut this off the cob. Mix it with some cream and get it cooked. And just like that, I get home and my meat is ready to be wrapped. It is totally, totally ready. I'm talking about not just a little bit ready, totally ready. So what are you gonna reach in here? Poke it, bring it out, set it right in there. Now is when we bring out the camp dog Cajun seasoning. And we're gonna get right with it, right in there like that. That fat's gonna pull it right down into that meat. I'm gonna flip her over for a second. Douse her on over again. And the reason we wrap it is because at this point, we need them juices to go through that meat over and over. I'm gonna turn it back over and put the fat back on top. We're gonna wrap it and stick her back in. Just like that. And now, we're going to shut the whole bassy down and let it cool off a little bit. It's rolling at about 400. We want to keep dropping, maybe get it down around 250. No, I ain't got no thermometer. I just kind of feel it. Let's go cut corn. Cutting corn is just like what it sounds like. You take a knife, preferably a Victorinox 6-inch, semi-stiff boning knife, which you can find in my descriptions, by the way. Once you get all the silk pulled off, you just cut it off the cob. If your knife's good and sharp, it'll lay it off of there, just like this, and you don't cut deep. This stuff is not sweet corn. It is not sweet corn. I repeat, this is not sweet corn. I've had so many people ask me for seed from this because they love, quote unquote love corn and I know they're not going to love it. This stuff is for silage. This stuff is for feeding animals. This stuff is for making cornbread, grinding it up when it gets hard and making cornbread. So what you see right here is not sweet corn, but it can be delicious cooked in a cream style. Only the old timers can remember it being done like this and there's actually a few old timers believe it or not that i have talked to over the years that said they did not like sweet corn too sweet they were completely used to good old field corn that's how they survived when they were young and i'll just tell you folks whatever you used to when you're young that's what you like when you're old so that was my white cross here's my straight up yellow Guatemalan going in and it doesn't take long as you can see just to knock that off what I did on that other cob and what I'll do on this cob you cut them tops off that ear like that then you come back with the back of your blade and you back scrape it that's how you get the juices out of the corn and that's how the cream really reacts well with that when you stick that cow cream in there you're talking about something good to eat let's do this here purple one real quick and I'll throw you on a time lapse and knock this out real quick. One way to get the silk off is to spin it like that. Just like you would throw a football or something and it spins it out away from there. Like that. The silk ain't bad for you. People act like it's poisonous. Did you know people take silk medicinally? Yeah, it's not going to kill you if a little silk gets in it. Alright. Here we go. Eric Hale, thank you so much for this scene. 
it's going to be creamed today in some delicious smoked cream corn for Labor Day. We having a party! <laughs> a nice little pile of corn. Let's get us a pot to cook it in, get us some cream and some salt, and we'll be good to go. All right, I've got what I need here. This here is one that's already been in the smoke. I take it with us on the land between the lakes hunting trip. Let's get all this corn down in here. Looks to me like about two quart. I'm a little bit concerned about old Frank. That guy claims he's fixing to leave. I was hoping he'd stay and eat with me today. You're going to stay and eat with me, son. Mom said I got to get that because we're going to go get some <sighs> Meh. She'll stay and wait for you, son. You eat with me and then you just not have to worry about it, son. Yeah, I'm worried. I've got, from my milk cow, a pint of cream. It's heavy cream straight off the top. The cream always rises. Mmm. I'm gonna pour an entire pint in there. And then we're gonna go with some salt. I'm gonna put two spoons of salt in there. That should be plenty. Now I'm just gonna stir all that up, mix it together thoroughly. Mm. In just a little bit, we're gonna be chopping on that. You ain't fixing to leave, are you, son? Yeah, I gotta go. Why? Gotta run. Well, why don't you stay and eat with me, son? I had to run. Good I bread, had, good really meat, go. good Lord, let's eat. Stay here and eat with me. You're earning my Labor Day, son. son. Oh, heartless old man. Mean old man. <laughs> All right, it's time to get the corn out and the meat out. Corn is... It's baked. Oh, is it ever baked? That's going to be delicious. It smells unbelievable. And the meat needs to rest until time to eat. And there it is. Oh, about dumped it. So we're done with this. Just shut this down and hopefully it has some coals left for next time. If you want to have coals left for next time, you gotta reach in there, throw this wood apart, separate it, get it away from each other, prop it up, whatever, and uh, that'll help it go out because if it's all together touching, it's just gonna continue to burn. And then shut it all down you could throw water on it if it really made that big a difference to you, but it don't to me. All right, guys, it's time to try this blue ribbon meat out. While I cut it, y'all can go ahead and start dipping your taters, corn. We got some hot dog blue ribbon potatoes here. These are potato salad. We got the corn smoked corn cake that I had no idea was gonna turn into cake. And then we've got this meat. I can't wait to try it all, to be honest with you. I'm gonna just take the bone, clean the bone off. Mary, I need some of that corn cake. Has anybody tried the corn yet? Mm -hmm. Is it edible or is it too smoky? Yeah. The way it's sealed over, I figured it might be really good. Look at that, folks. Mmm, it's still quite hot. Wow, that's good. It's a very filling corn. It's not light and sweet. Mary, the potatoes are downright good. Thank you. 
We're gonna go in for some of that pork. Mm-mm-mm. That right there will make any Labor Day happy. Mm. In the South, sweet tea is a must at every party or get together. Potato salad, corn, a little bit of pork somewhere along the way. That's how you celebrate right there, folks. I hadn't heard anything out of Matt or Caleb yet. It's Just right? Have you tried the corn yet? It's good. It's not too smoky, is it? I thought it would be. It's really good. It's really good. What do you think about the tater salad? Who made it? Mary made it? Mm -hmm. It definitely blue ribbon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in here store bought? Not, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything anywhere. There's not one, uh, the tea. The tea is the only thing store bought. We raised the mangalitsa pork, we raised the potatoes, we raised the onion, we raised the bell peppers. We raised the corn, we raised the cream from the cow. So other than the salt, the camp dog seasoning, and the tea, it's all basically straight here off the place. Can you pass me one of them reaper peppers? Is there a reaper pepper? Mm -hmm. Carolina reaper pepper is what makes everything better, let me tell you. If you haven't experienced that yet, I highly recommend it. Just cut a little bit up, put it on your food. Everything else gets better from there. And I should close the video out before I eat the Carolina Reaper. That way you can get in the comments and say, ha ha, you didn't even eat it. Here we go. Mm, mm, mm. That will make your lips come to grips. David, is it good? Mm -hmm. All right, Bob, thank you so much for, the, for hounding me to death about this. You have spoke about Labor Day weekend for at least four weeks, trying to get me to do something. Well, I done something. I never put out a long video on a Monday, but today I did. Y'all have a great Labor Day. We'll see you on the next video.